When I saw that Brad Pitt and George Clooney were gonna be reuniting for a brand new crime thriller called Wolves, I instantly got excited, but I got even more excited when I saw the likes of John Watts was leaving the MCU to make a brand new original movie, instantly became one of my more anticipated films for the year, and it's pretty solid. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're discussing Wolves. This is about two rival fixers who cross paths when they're both called in to help cover up a prominent New York official's misstep. One explosive night, they'll have to set aside their petty grievances their, and their egos to finish the job. Like I mentioned, this stars the likes of Brad Pitt, George Clooney, and it is directed and written by John Watts, who has not directed a film that is original or outside of the MCU in almost five, six, seven years at this point. And I've been excited for this because I really liked his previous original film effort, Cop Car with Kevin Bacon. I thought that was a very entertaining movie. Simple, but effective. And I think Kevin Bacon makes that film for what it is. But when it comes down to this, I was curious to see how he was going to be able to dive into a new kind of trajectory and showcase himself as a director. And I think what it kind of goes as far to show is that John Watts really is good at, I think the best thing I can say is that he's really good at simplicity. And I think that comes down to even in the Spider-Man movies is that sometimes the more simple efforts in terms of relationships, in terms of banter, in terms of dialogue is sometimes the best. And I know some people have their grievances with the Spider-Man trilogy, and I'm not going to be here to get into that and to get in that argument. We can have that discussion a whole other point. But within Wolves, what I was so impressed with was that simplicity. Now, was this film the most mind-blowing thing I've ever watched? No. It, will some people find it pretty generic and like they've seen it before? Yes. But for me, fixers in Hollywood specifically or just helping you know more prominent people in the industries is always an interesting thing. One of my favorite shows of all time is Ray Donovan. I love when Leif Schreiber played a fixer in there. And to have George Clooney and Brad Pitt taking on these roles is fascinating to me. And for the most part, I enjoyed the movie overall. Again, didn't mind-blowingly make this the most unique thing that I've ever watched all year long, but it's really much built off of George Clooney and Brad Pitt's chemistry. And without that chemistry, I don't know if this film would have entirely worked. I think it still would have been enjoyable for the most part, but those two alone make me go, yeah, that sequel they already announced, I'd be interested in seeing that. Before we dive into any further into this, make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like, subscribe, and are you excited to finally be able to check this out? It was in theaters. Did you see it in theaters? Or are you checking that out on streaming? Let me know down below. And what did you think of John Watts' next directorial effort? Let's talk about it all down there. Pre movie review, I like starting to talk about the pros, and let's jump into that as well. So first off, right off the bat, Brad Pitt, George Clooney. Their chemistry off the top. That is the reason to watch this movie, is because of Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Both of them equally fantastic. The second you see them interact within this, it is already firing on all cylinders. It have a lot of dark comedic moments in it that do make you laugh, smirk, kind of giggle at some of their just chemistry and some of their dialogue with one another and specifically their banter and how they are forced to work together and put aside some of those egos and that grievances and they come to understand that maybe they're a little bit closer in line than they would appear and I overall really like that idea I like that whole entire scenario and I like when they can bring that in the movies and specifically when you get two actors like this at this caliber it makes it entertaining and I'm not sure how the whole idea came up, how John Watts crafted this idea, if they were the main pick that he wanted for this, but it does feel like these roles were written specifically for them, and if they didn't pick it up, maybe this movie wouldn't have been made. And I could be wrong on that, but it does feel like that that's what John Watts was doing here. And I think, again, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, they are the singular reason to watch this. Now, the second big reason to watch this is to see what John Watts can do outside of the MCU. And I think a lot of that comes down to being, you know, a lot of people have not seen Cop Car. A lot of people have not seen Clown. I haven't seen Clown, his previously written film. But now jumping into this after seeing Cop Car, after jumping jumping out of the MCU and really enjoying what he did with the Spider-Man franchise, but curious to see what he can do outside of it. I think he, again, effortlessly developed into the simplicity of situations. And I don't know if I expected more from Wolf's itself other than the chemistry and the banter because I don't think the story is like all that completely interesting. We'll talk a little bit more about that in my cons and my issues. But for me, that simplicity of just having them interact with one another, go through these situations. How are you going to 
move this body? How are you going to get out of this tale and this situation? And those simplistic ideas, it's not these big elaborate things like say Ocean's 11 or Ocean's 12 or Ocean's 13 or any of these other things that we've seen prior. It's very simple of how they're doing it. And I like that. And again, I like that sometimes it doesn't mind to take time of just them driving around, having a conversation. And then this thing gets thrown at them and oh, we're connected in a way that we didn't expect. I think John Watts has always done that. And I don't think that works for everybody, but it is kind of unique to see him do it again in this movie and to get a little bit more of an elaborate taste to what his directing style is. I think that is the second singular reason is to watch this is to see a different directing as well as the cinematography is exquisite in this film the way that they bring to life like a wintry new york setting just feels like something that would have been made back in the 90s or the 80s for a film just more into the modern day style of lifestyle and specifically with modern day technology but it looks gorgeous and i really was taken back by how beautiful this movie looked i think a lot of apple tv movies look good but this is like easily at the top as well as the score really adds to a lot of the different moments and i thought the synthetic score that they went for was quite interesting in the way that it moved along the pacing and moved along certain scenarios. There's an entire car chase that is filmed very well in here that I was pretty impressed with. With my pros out of the way, let's dive into my issues with this. And I think some of my issues kind of come down to the mystery and the story at hand here. Towards the end of the first act, there's something that's introduced that changes the entire situation that they are wrapped in that overall Austin Abrams is a part of. And I think his role in here is pretty interesting. I think he did a good job, but when it comes down to what they're developing and what they're trying to do, I thought it was very simple and I could kind of just pinpoint what was kind of going to go on here. And I, again, I like the simplicity of their banter and the situation, but I think for the mystery of the story and how predictable it could get, I wish there was a little bit more to do there personally. And specifically as it kind of gets into the third act, it feels a little bit, oh, all this is happening and then boom, 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 it's, it's settled and done. And I wish there was either better development here or more little tinkerings with, I'm trying not to get into spoilers, but tinkering with the villain of some sorts for this story. It's never felt like they went deeper and they probably could have with those scenarios to add a little bit more to the world building that the wolves live in and specifically with what Austin is a part of. And I think there was a nice parallel that they could have touched into that would have added more character development to Clooney and Pitt's character. I think for me, that is... Specifically, even the way that the film ends, I just felt like there was always more waiting for there. And maybe that's something that they'll dive into the sequel. Again, this is very much more of an introduction to this world. And if we want to look at something like John Wick, where it was just an introduction, you're enjoying the action, you're enjoying the character, you're wanting more of this world, the later films did start to build on that. And maybe Wolves will do that, but it's not always guaranteed. I would have liked a little bit more of that in here. And I think for the runtime, it's pretty solid. Another 10 minutes maybe would have helped. For being one of my most anticipated movies of the year, I found this to be enjoyable. It's nothing mind-blowing, it's nothing new, but it's very entertaining, very simple, and shot immensely well. Kind of how most of Watt's original films are, cop car, off the backs of Clooney and Pitt's fantastic chemistry. Without this, I don't know if this film would be worth watching for many, but for me it did, and I would gladly watch a sequel, so that's why I'm going to give Wolf's a B-. minus. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts, and of course, until next time, Stay classy.